greater than 10, and 2 plus 10 is greater than 10. And it seems, although they're both infinite, when we graph all the ones that make it true, the way we do that is we graph x plus y equals 10, but we do it with a dotted line. And then we have to decide which side of the line to shade on. Well, if you take a, a point like 0, 0 and check it, 0 plus 0 is not greater than 10. So we're going to shade the other side. Now if we do the same thing with x minus y is less than 2, and we graph, um, we graph all the points that, that make this true, maybe we get something like this, that make it equal to 2. And then we test the point 0, 0. Well, 0 minus 0 is 0, which is less than 2. So we graph the side that contains that. Now notice how there's a portion here, it's like a triangle, which has both types of shading in it. That is the solution set to this question. Those are all the points that are both, uh, you add them, it's greater than 10, and when you subtract them, it's going to be less than 2. So we get this sort of triangle. Well, now we can apply this to the question that they're in. They don't tell us what the equations are, but they give us the entire graph. So you can see is I have sort of horizontal shading over here, this is like horizontal shading, and this is sort of somewhat vertical shading. And over here, I've got both kinds of shading. So this portion here is the solution set. So basically, they're asking uh, which, uh, which of these points is in this solution set. And you can just test them all, and it looks like 1, negative 4 is down here, which is in that doubly shaded area. So question 11 here is asking about uh, which table does not show bivariate data. And for this one, you have to know the definition of, of bivariate data, because they all seem to have sort of these two columns in them. Um, but what makes something bivariate data is that each you have a, uh, an independent variable and a dependent variable, so, so a thing that kind of changes based on the other thing that we're trying to measure. So people are this height, and here's how much they weigh. So depending on the height, their weight is, is different, and we want to find that maybe relationship. Um, you could have a certain number of gallons, and you want to know how many miles you can drive with that. And um, if you had this information, you could do that. The gallons would be the independent. So I would pick how many gallons I want, and I would measure how many miles were driven. For number four, um, I can decide how fast I'm going to go. That would be my independent variable. And a certain distance would happen because of the speed I chose. That would be the dependent variable. But for number three, and this is very, I don't really like this question very much. Uh, it's pretty confusing. I can see arguments for uh, saying that these are all bivariate data, unless I'm not fully understanding the definition. Um, but the quiz average and the frequency, you it's not like you pick what the quiz average is and then a frequency happens. This is just more sort of facts that you would put onto a bar graph. So I'm not that pleased with my explanation of this, but uh, the answer is choice number three. Number 12, I can do a lot better. Uh, this is a much more standard uh, question in math. They want to know the solution to the system of equations c plus 3d equals 8 and c equals 4d minus 6. So basically, there's a pair of numbers that make both of those equations true at the same time. Now, when you have a system of equations, there are two different ways to, to do them. And if you have a system of equations where you have answer choices, there's actually three different ways. So I'm just going to take you through a little summary of systems of equations. If you have a system of equations like x plus y equals 10, x minus y equals 2, one method is what's called elimination. That's where you add together the two equations. And if you have a situation like this where the y would cancel out with the negative y, you could just add the two equations to get the answer for x. Then you could plug that x into either of these two equations to get y equals 4. So that's the elimination method. The elimination method sometimes requires doing a little bit of, of extra work for instance, if I had um, x plus 2y 
equals 3 and 2x minus 3y equals negative 1. I couldn't just add the two equations together. I'd have to first get it so that something would cancel out. So uh, noticing that this is positive and this is negative already, if I multiply the bottom equation by 2 and the top equation by 3, I would get 3x plus 6y equals 9, and the bottom equation would become 4x minus 6y equals negative 2. Then I'd be able to add them together to get 7x equals 7, or x equals 1. We could plug that 1 back into either of these equations to get y equals 1. So that's called the elimination method. Another method, so that's, that's the elimination. Another very good method to use would be like this. If I had y equals 2x plus 1, um, let's see, and I have 2x plus 3y is um, 11. If a question is like this, where you have one of the equations is sort of solved in terms of one variable, like y equals, you could use a method called substitution. Substitution is when you take the y in the other equation and replace it with this entire expression, the 2x plus 1. So 2x plus 3, don't forget your parentheses, 2x plus 1 equals 11. 2x, distribute the 3 through, 6x plus 3 equals 11. 8x plus 3 equals 11 it means that 8x equals 8 or x equals 1, plug that 1 back into this equation to get y equals 3. That's called substitution. Now there is going to be another way because we have the choices here, but first I'm going to teach you how you could have done uh, this question with substitution. Now notice how the bottom equation is solved in terms of c. It says c equals. So what you can do is take the c from the top equation and replace it with 4d minus 6. So I would get the equation 4d minus 6 plus 3d equals 8. So it's 4d, now don't let this minus confuse you, that minus is part of the 6, plus 3d is 7d minus 6 equals 8. Add 6 to both sides, 7d equals 14, divide both sides by 7, get d equals 2. Once you have the d value, you could plug it in to this. So c equals 4 times 2 minus 6, which is 8 minus 6, which is also 2. And uh, that is actually the answer to this question. It was choice 3 to that question. Now, in this question, because it's a multiple choice question, you could actually get this answer by testing all of the choices. The way that would look is you would actually plug negative 14 and negative 2 into this equation and see if it becomes positive 8. And if it does, you would then plug it into this equation and see if it, if it comes out to be the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. If you tested all four choices, you would also come up with choice 3. But you do want to know the substitution method and the elimination method because they, these sorts of questions could also come up on uh, the part 2s, 3s, 4s where you have to show your work. Now question 13 asks which of these four graphs represents a function? So why don't you take a minute to think about what you would say for this question. Now this is a pretty sophisticated idea, the idea of a function, but for the purposes of doing well on this uh, integrated algebra regents exam, the thing that you'll need to know is that something is not a function if you could draw a vertical line somewhere on it which would cross more than one point. So this ellipse here is not a function because as you can see if I drew a vertical line there it would hit two points. This S-shaped thing is not a function because if I draw certain vertical lines I could hit three points. But this V-shaped thing is a function because no matter where I draw a vertical line it's only going to hit one point.